Okay, so we've got a few others as well. Be a support and a participant, absolutely. Once team coaching starts, he's another team member, he or she. And coaching coach also has to treat him just as another member. So the coach has to treat him as him or her as another member. But from a so the one thing that's very important for a team coaching partnership to work is very similar to how we would see it in a um, sports team, right? So imagine there's a football team or a cricket team, right? So one of the things that we need to always remember is it is the team leader's team. It is not our team, right? The team leader goes out and bats or balls or if it's a football team, plays the match and they're the captain of the team. So they lead the team. It is their team, right? As coaches, we are, we never get out there to bat, not what we do. Our job is to stand outside the pitch, right? Our job is to always support the performance. And that could mean supporting the team leader. It could mean supporting how people play with each other, pointing out the blind spots, helping them get over those things that get in the way. But ultimately, it is the team leader and the team who actually go out to play. So no. these are two different roles. Oh, no, Rachel, I put the point. The, what I had in mind was like this. See, there are the team coaching consists of several sessions. Yeah. In group sessions and in after that, in between sessions, right? Hmm. So in the in-group session, when all of them are together, we are coaching the team as a whole. Yeah. He's just another team member. Yeah. Thereafter, we take a step back, like they are now got into the field, cricket field or a football field. Allow him to operate. And like in the break, the coach gets into the thing. Again, the next session happens, he gets what happened, what did happen, what could be done. That's what I meant. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. So I, I get you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bobby. So that's correct. As Bobby just said, that uh, while when it comes to performance, it is the team leader's team. Uh, but when we are in the coaching session, of course, things are different. And uh, uh, I think Bikram Da, you said this, na, that, uh, that leave your ego outside the door. So that's, you know, again, I will reiterate that point. That's, that's sometimes hard, right? And it's not hard because the team leader might be a bad person <laughs> or they don't want to cooperate. It's just that sometimes it can be hard if you don't understand what we are getting into. People get apprehensive. People sometimes get territorial as well, right? And um, it's also important to not assume that the team leader is happy to have you there. Like I had this one project very early on in my team coaching days. And there was this sponsor who was, uh, uh, you know, uh, who I had coached at one point and uh, they came back and said, why don't you coach this team? You know, that I've spoken to the team leader and I think they're the right team. They, they will do well with team coaching. So why don't you just go in and I've set up a meeting with you with the team leader. And I very happily walked into that meeting, assuming that the team leader was very happy to have me there. Right. But what I did not realize was the sponsor was happy to have me there. The team leader, one, had no idea what coaching means. Second, had no idea what I was going to do. And they were operating from that very fearful place of discomfort. And I just went in guns blazing and then started saying, we will do this and we will do that. And Esa Hoga and Vesa Hoga and all of that. And it didn't go very far. <laughs> because I think it just put them into that space. Was, I don't know what this is. And I'm not sure I'm comfortable doing it. And... Uh, Typically in organizations, if a leader is not comfortable with something, it's very rare for, you know, those, those projects to go forward. They'll always find a way of not making it happen. So don't go in with the assumption that the team leader is happy to have you there, right? So we're going to do a quick breakout activity. And I see a couple of questions. I will come back to the questions after what does the team leader play in the team meeting when coaching is going on. So we will come back to the, these two questions after the breakout room. I am just going to paste a couple of instructions for the breakout room, right? So we will go into the breakout room and what we're going to do, is this, right? So one person in the room is going to be the data gatherer and we will all take one minute each to talk about what are some fears some concerns or some apprehensions that the team leader might have with respect to team coaching. And why I've put practice PCC competency 7.7, .7, does somebody remember what that is? What is PCC competency 7.7? .7? 
Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming nobody's given the PCC very recently. That pro competency is be clear and concise. So we will practice the art of bottom lining. So everybody shares one or two. The data gatherer gathers it, types it out somewhere. And when we come back, we will do this for about six minutes. When we come back, uh, the person who's doing the data gathering will paste it into chat so everybody can read it. And we'll, of course, share as well. All right. So I'm going to uh, one request. Please copy these instructions onto a notepad or something, because the moment I put you into breakout rooms, these instructions will disappear. So just give me a thumbs up once you've copied. So then I will open up the breakout. Rachel, room. They should be available for the breakout rooms as well. They used to be, but I think last time I had that experience, it didn't work. So I'm just uh, kind of being a little risk averse, <laughs> okay. just in case. I'm unable to copy. Is that possible? Should not. Yeah, guys, it doesn't allow copying from the chat. So really? Maybe we can screen. Yeah, it, does. so it screen doesn't allow to copy from the chat. Oh. Okay. I thought a few, I saw a few thumbs up. You can take a screenshot. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. How many people are we there? So, we will... okay. So, can I open the breakout rooms? Can you show that slide again so that we can screenshot? Okay. So, the instructions are not on the slide, instructions are on the in the chat. Okay. Yes, concerns, sample attention, so that's all. Take care. So one person just copy it and like type it out or something somewhere. Yeah. All right. I'll open the breakout rooms. I'll see you guys. Hang on. Why is it not giving me? Okay. It's not giving me an option to assign select timing. Anyways, I'm assigning it. I'll get you back in six minutes. See you in six. Rachel, we're back. Yes, I can see that. So welcome back. All right. So let's. Uh... The ghost participant, Dr. Winston never was missing. Sorry? Dr. Winston was missing. We are waiting for his inputs. Oh, okay. Is it so? <laughs> okay. All right. So people who are doing the data gathering, why don't you share with us in chat? Uh, what are some? Okay. We've got some nice risks there already from John C. Ego of the leader. Leader has to show that they have it all together and so if they're feeling like they need to show that great team leader might feel john C, do you, do you maybe want to read this out as well for us yes yes uh, so yeah. the second one is uh, team leader might feel that it is not a psychologically safe space for themselves and also fear uh, of loss of control of yes. themselves the third thing is uh, will the group dynamics affect the existing power balance yeah the yeah, fourth one will be, will it lead to a conflict between my own team members? Personal mm -hmm. conflict also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, will it be a waste of time? Yeah. Of so many people <laughs> together. The sixth one, what if the team says anything against my own leadership style? And they do that. A lot of times they do that. What if the team decides anything against what I want as a leader? Am I being assessed as a leader? These are some yeah. of the questions that came up. Beautiful, beautiful list. Thank you, John C. You're you want to? Yeah. I think I'll read it out, right? Yes. It takes longer to put it in the chat. Yeah, so, so what was discussed was, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to see, okay, I'll just say what was discussed rather than by exception from what John C. shared. Uh, one was that, okay, if the person is within, in the group, or rather in the in you know treated as an equal uh, their 
respect from the others, right? And if they are outside, then would something we said, uh, which you know they won't have an opportunity to uh, uh, explain or uh, that kind of thing. So behind the back, whether someone would bite them, kind of thing, uh, they would lose control, uh, apprehensions of losing control. Members who won't uh, give them weight, uh, time wasted. Essentially, similar point. Whether it was, you know, would this really be a effective thing towards the team goals? Because mm. if it's a project, there are timelines and things like that. Are we really, uh, you know, uh, doing the, you know, wasting our time kind of thing? Insecure about their own position, weaknesses. Yeah, so that uh, their own weaknesses coming out. So then that aspect of vulnerability, uh, if they are to be seen as equal, you know, the leaving the ego out part, as mm. Vikram Da had said, uh, that's a huge challenge. And uh, even you know, in fact, when when uh, training happens with the uh, senior, with the boss of the team, uh, there there is always a discomfort felt. Yeah, that was a sharing. So particularly if it's a technical team, because you expect it to be the uh, you know the expertise is to lie with you being the senior person, and mm -hmm. do you then share a vulnerability of a not knowing something or getting something wrong? Yeah. So it was that vulnerability part how difficult or challenging it is to be that vulnerable it's essentially i think uh, owning the concept of uh, you know coaching and believing it works as a process yeah, yeah. all right thank you thank you nikhil uh, shalil would you like to go next yeah okay for our time it's all pretty sorry i think it's uh, all pretty uh, uh, sunil would you like to go ahead yeah, for breakout room one, if I could. <clears throat> so um, we had four or five concerns. One was, uh, if I'm an equal among people, how am I going to be evaluated or judged by others? Will I be? That was a concern or an apprehension. One more was about the relationship between team members uh, and the leader. Uh, to add on to it, we had this cultural thing. So if you're doing it in different parts of the world, there is a certain culture uh, between the leader and the follower and how the leader is seen. Uh, the third one was, how will all this work for us? How are we going to break the bigger team goal into smaller goals, uh, which are relevant for us? Um, another addition was bitter truths coming out. We're going to face stuff which we know, but it's going to come out into the open. And of course, the last one was, what kind of brief has been given by the sponsor? Yeah. Um, to the uh, to the coach yeah. uh, and what's a sticky part shared so far yeah thank you Sunil so uh, Shalil and Rajeshwari what I'll ask you now is uh, if there are any points that have come in your team that are different from what's already been shared just talk about those for us please uh, I think pretty much it's a lot of things there's a lot of overlap that's happening uh, I think the, one of the things that has not come up is uh, something that came up as the fear of being victimized, probably losing a little bit of control, uh, uh, a long-term vision for the organ for that particular team being probably be di diluted that apprehension. I think uh, I think this is uh, unique so far. Pretty much the rest of it has some overlap or the other in some form or in some way. Or the other. Okay, thanks, thanks, Shali. Rajeshwari. Um, I think most of it is covered, Rich. Okay, don't see right. Uh, so request Nikhil uh, and Sunil, uh, if there are any points that are not on this on the chat, just type them in, only the ones that are not on the chat. Uh, because what I plan to do is at the end of our session, I want to collate this and mail it out to whoever's attended. So that the next time you're preparing for your team coaching assignment, you have this to check in on. Yeah, would that be useful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So you see the thumbs ups. Yeah, <laughs> I, do. Still, uh, I just want to add one more point that yes, came please. up in our uh, group that uh, the team leader will have to exercise restraint uh, so that he doesn't slip back. He or she doesn't slip back into their traditional role and remain an equal. And that's going to be really difficult uh, to do. You know, so that will be one fear at the back of his mind to know when he's slipping back and when he's actually being part of the team. Absolutely. And these are all realities of a team coaching assignment, which is why they say team coaching is messy. Mm. Uh, it is messy. Yeah. And also, if I may add uh, here, Rachel, uh, 
in uh, room number two, we also spoke about uh, if the in the meeting, if the team members was if the uh, there was the meeting was not a success, then what about the blame game? The blame game will happen then. Yeah. Which is also a point which Bobby made, you know. But uh, if, if the if the meeting not successful, then they're only blaming the supervisor as such. Yeah. The leader. Yeah. And of course, the rest was the same of the fear of the unknown, the opening up of the Pandora box, as they call it. And it what, is what, often what like opening the Pandora's box. So, uh, Devraj, I'm going to request you to just put put this point into chat so that later on when I collate it, I capture it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And of course, introverts versus extroverts. That was a big point. Because a lot of times the extroverts are the ones who take over, right? And the introverts yeah, so are just sitting. The, that's when you're in the team coaching room. Here we're only talking about you and the team leader. Sure, okay? sure. All right. Yeah. So now, now that you know, and I, I promise you that all of these scenarios are real. Everything that you've written on the screen is th stuff that will be going through. Most of this will be going through unless they're an extremely secure confident person who know exactly what team coaching is, who's very secure about their position in the team and, you know, uh, know that nothing's going to fall apart. And that's a rare human being. Most people will feel this apprehension, all of these things that you've listed, right? Now, if this is what the team leader may be feeling, and we don't know, you know, before you actually meet the team leader, a lot of times when you're contracted, you are going to be at the, or, you know, your initial conversations are going to be more at a sponsor level. Right? So if the team leader has not met you and they've been told, oh, we're putting your team into team coaching, all of this is going through your team leader's mind. Right? Now, if that is the case, what does the team leader need from you? Yeah, but uh, Rachel, just one, before we go there, uh, yeah. one question. Yeah. You know, somehow the way it is coming out, it is that this team coaching is being done because there's an issue. Not necessarily. And, uh, because then only the apprehensions are coming and all those things. Suppose we just said that this team has been created to send a, uh, to, uh, to a rocket to the moon hmm. or to Mars. Hmm. Then will the situation be the same? Then you still have to have coaching. Then yeah. will the, I'm saying because if I know my team is not well and, I, this, and, and also this team has been created only for this purpose. It is not a team which is going to continue for eternity. A small duration team with a specific purpose, a coaching to understand things better, get clarity and get cracking. So it will also depend upon the applications, fears will also depend upon the purpose and the overall motive behind setting up the uh, team coaching engagement is a thought which is coming to my mind. No, I agree with you, uh, Bobby. But what I have seen is even when it is not like, we and coaching is not necessarily, as we all know about fixing things. It's also about, you know, new aspirations and new things. In fact, the case study that we'll work on right after this is about that. Um, so it is not that. But even then, you know, these small things of how much of my power will I lose, right? And I'm a good leader. My employee satisfaction scores say I'm a good leader. But still, there are like out of like six people or eight people who report into me. I know two don't like me, right? So, you know, so it's it makes a lot of people very insecure. And I'm just making you aware of the fact that this might be the reality you're walking into. May not be. Like I said, you may occasionally meet a very secure team leader. I've met those as well. But remember, your team leader is human. Right. And it's OK if they are feeling a little unsure and it's OK if they're feeling a little you know, jittery. The question that comes is, what does the team leader need from you? Now, let's say you are about to start, you're about to meet your team leader for the first time. What do they need so that all of these apprehensions and all of these worries and all of these things kind of settle down? So give that a thought. Share that with me in chat. John, why don't you answer that for me? Whose responsibility is it to assuage the team leader's concerns? What do you think? Actually, I don't have the foggiest clue. <laughs> Anybody here wants to answer that? And the reason being that, uh, you know, we have sponsors, we have a whole bunch of stakeholders in all of these equations. And in a, in a situation like this, uh, whose responsibility is it really to set that thing? Or is it an expectation that the so-called group coach will, team coach will do that? So I would say it is the responsibility of the coach to have that conversation. Now, sometimes 
it works sometimes it doesn't but it is our responsibility to be one sensitive to the fears and second establish that partnership right like with any other coaching one on one coaching assignment it is our job to manage and create that safety in that relationship right which is why i told you that uh, uh, you know we we are going to be using this the core competence the team coaching competencies of establishing agreements and cultivating trust and safety so creating safety is our job as coaches now there might be a very insecure individual who cannot feel safe and you won't be 100% successful but my experience in team coaching says that about 80 85% of the times it works right people just need to feel safe with you and a large part of that is also about establishing the roles and responsibilities what will i do and what will you do and that i'm not going to step onto your toes right and we are going to do this together and how do we you know how do we calibrate on things and you know so those relationships you need to establish uh cn muti yes yeah uh, thanks thanks you know the thought that struck me is um, that it's possibly the way in which contracting is done by the team coach with the with the team mm. on matters of this kind so that there is a mutual expectation and understanding of not just uh, roles but responsibilities um and everything else that's going to happen in a team coaching session absolutely you 100% agree I, i think that is the role that has to be played by the team coach the contracting process yes. probably you are absolutely right you are absolutely 100% right so uh it the right word is contracting what is the role that i as a team coach will play what is the role that you will play how right. will we work together right now some of the things that i'd like to do when i'm going into a team coaching assignment is have that simple conversation that before i go into the session i will broadly tell you that this is you know like today we will do the goal setting let's say right and this is how i will do the goal setting this is the process right and then we also contract on let's say a team member comes to me and says this that i don't like the team leader right how am i going to address it i tell them up clearly that i so i i think those of you who attended last session uh, dr murphy session will remember he say, said that i any information shared with me is anonymous it is not necessarily confidential right so also we sometimes coach like a member comes to you and says i don't like the team leader we don't say we're going to you know become the parent and solve it for you we say what do you want to do about it? right so we will always be the coach in the relationship now in this context of what we are working on today we are going to now talk about how do we establish those roles and responsibilities with the team leader and how do you also create that trust and safety so i'm going to very very mercilessly now throw you into the case study <laughs> okay so sorry for building that okay so before you start the co coaching the actual team coaching or you even sometimes before you meet the sorry are you still able to see my screen yes no yes yeah okay so before you start getting into a team coaching session you will always start by establishing what are the roles what is the role i am going to play what is the role that you will play how does confidentiality work so what the team leader shares with you what the team member shares with you what the team come together shares with you how does it stay with you who is it shared with who is it not shared with what are the permissions right and what will be the process for feedback now let's say you know the team leader's fear is ki what if somebody goes and you know complains about me to the team coach so you address it up front and you say that let's say somebody comes and shares something with me or i observe some behavior that i see you doing i will have a conversation with you after or is there a way that you prefer to get that feedback right so you establish a partnership very similar to one on one coaching it's about partnership so you have to build that collaborative contract of how are we going to work well together okay now some red flags that you need to watch out for if the team leader is not convinced about the need of the coaching and this happens okay team leader believes all problems are the team no problem with me the team leader is not open to feedback or the team leader is insecure and is not over, able to get over the insecurity of why has a team coach been introduced and that sometimes becomes 
about the, their relationship with the sponsor. If there's no good trust between them and the sponsor or some level of trust with the sponsor that they're doing it for the good of the business or the good of the team or my good, then sometimes it's very hard. So these are red flags. And my uh, you know, invitation to you would be that if you see these red flags, be a little wary about getting into that assignment because you cannot have a successful team coaching assignment if the team leader is not on board, not 100% on board. Yeah. So, yes, Nagesh. Not sure this is out of the scope for this session, but during the agreement part, uh, the sponsor involved the team leader as well uh, during the agreement part? It depends. It depends uh, assignment to assignment. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But uh, typically, you don't go beyond the discovery phase without having the team leader involved. Okay. okay. So in the interest of time, I'm going to go a little faster now. <laughs> so some assumptions that we want to avoid is that the team leader understands what coaching is. Yeah, this is a mistake I've made. I assume the team leader understands what coaching is and they had not the foggiest clue because sometimes you'll have team leaders who've never gone through one-on-one -on -one coaching, never have met a coach and they may think you're just another trainer. And they will ask you, oh, so what are you going to teach us? Right. So very similar to the you know responses we sometimes get with one-on-one -on -one coaches as well, coaches as well. Also assuming that a team leader is ready, don't assume that. Don't assume that they see the need. And I think somebody had spoken about this earlier, or that the team leader fully understands the needs of the team. This is also a mistake I've made where I go and ask the team leader, so tell me everything about you and what do you do and how do you fit into the business? And sometimes you'll have experiences with a team leader doesn't have a complete understanding of how they fit into the business. And that's also a real reality sometimes. They don't understand how th who their stakeholders are, what are the needs they're serving. They have a very superficial understanding of their own business. Right? So this also happens. So don't assume you will get all your answers from business with the team leader as well. Okay, so with that, we will go into the case study. So this is the case study. Yeah, so I will share this with you in chat as well. So there's an organization and they've received, recently received some funding and they now want to expand in the international market and they have a product team, which is led by the team leader who's Smita. And Smita has uh, six members, two are hired in the last year, rest are as her, they are quite tenured in the organization, right? And you are going to meet Smita for the first time. So that's the case study. Feel free to change the name if of the team leader if it doesn't feel comfortable. Now it's a 25 minute role play. Um, two minutes to decide the role. You will have one role. So we're going to again go into rooms of five people. There will be one team leader, one coach. And my invitation to you would be to, you know, lean into your discomfort zone and be the coach, right? And the team leader can be any type of team leader. The only assumption that we will make here is that a team leader understands coaching because otherwise our own whole role play will go in just explaining coaching. So we will assume that the team leader knows what coaching is. One person keeps time and there's one representative who's going to capture the learnings. So we're going to have a 15 minute conversation between coach and team leader. And the job of the team leader, uh, sorry, the coach is to build trust and safety, gauge the team leader's readiness for coaching and get a high level agreement on what our roles will be and how we will work together. There's only so much you can do in 15 minutes, I understand. And in the last eight minutes, you are going to capture the learnings and come back. And what are the learnings? Everybody in the team is going to share on a scale of one to 10, how, how ready is the team leader for coaching? How safe are they feeling? And one thing that the coach did well and one thing they could do better. And when we come back, we will see based on how much time we have, we will share share it if we are not able to share and we don't have enough time again i'll request all the people who are the who's the representative for the group to type it out so that we can still share it in chat and you know learn learn from that right all right i will do one thing before that i am just going to drop this case study right does it allow me to put in an attachment it does right file okay i'm just going to drop you this pdf So, yep. All right, so download that. 
Give me a thumbs up once you've downloaded and I will open the breakout rooms. Done, John is done. Done, Venkat's done. Done, done. Okay, so I am opening up the breakout rooms. And I will see you back in 25. Um, you know, could we have a few more minutes with ourselves? I think we got pulled out too fast. Okay, so hard stop. Yeah, <laughs> hard stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did everybody feel that, or did you feel the time was less? Yeah, no, I think we managed it well. Actually, we managed it well. Rachel was twenty-five minutes completely given to us. Yes, yes, it was. I counted four minutes lesser. That's why. Yeah, that's why. Same here. No, I, you guys went it at like uh, six fifty-five, and I got you back at seven twenty. So, twenty-five minutes. Muti sir, what are you Mister? You could say it when comes to summarizing. No, I'm not saying it. Let's go ahead. Okay, so let's let's look at this. So Sudarshan's Rachel, already put it in. Rachel, time given is not enough. Like salary is never enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jagdish. Jagdish, good, good one. one. <laughs> Okay, so in the interest of time, we'll quickly go through, uh, brief, you know, run through the, what we've learned. So, uh, Sudarshan, why don't you share with us, you know, just give us top two or three things that you learned uh, in the room. <coughs> learned in the room. Top yes. things I learned from the session is um, establishing the effort to establish the <coughs> sustained safety by the coach. Hmm. Um, through open-ended questions and uh, also clarifying what uh, what would happen in the coaching mm. uh, so that it uh, he also connected back to uh, the when the when the coachy got insight the team got insight he, he connected back to how the coaching will go about in the further session so that he feels more convinced about going ahead right that was a top learning for me okay who was the coach in your room Coach was uh, John C. and uh, DB was a okay. team. So I see very high ratings in terms of, uh, uh, you know, trust. And, and 15 minutes is a really short time. I understand that. In real life, it won't be like that. But this is a learning uh, space. But 
uh, I think those are really good ratings. So if you really manage to establish that level of trust, even in that short time, I think good job. Okay. Uh, next group. This You were room number what, Sudarshan? Four. Four. Okay. So let's go back, go to one. Who's room number one? Shruti. That's our room. So, um, so in our room, coach was uh, Prasad and the TV was Hatha. Um, so in terms of observations, um, at the beginning, uh, when you were doing the rating later on, uh, everyone agreed that at the beginning, the team leader was sounding very apprehensive, uh, was very um, you know, guarded in uh, even the responses. And the coach was asking questions in a, in a different way mm -hmm. um, to draw her out mm -hmm. and um, taking the making the effort to acknowledge her fears. Uh, she was very open about her um, doubts, why it may not work with the team, with the project, international, and many other things. And the coach was making the effort to acknowledge all of that. He never contradicted her never corrected on, on that. Uh, so there was a lot of focus on building a certain kind of connection with the team leader. Yes. Okay. And towards the end, um, uh, even when uh, he asked whether, you know, she would um, get on board with him to help him connect with her team leader, team members. Mm -hmm. And um, so she was, she, she was sounding more okay with exploring that idea okay and um, to see where it goes um, so yeah there, there were a lot of questions coming from the team leader about the why and the how and why you're here why we are here expectations setting what am I needed for and the coach was very patient with all of that and um, constantly uh, wanting to make her feel okay, we seem to have a blackout every minute Okay, There's so a power cut, seems. Yeah, even my yeah. place is a power cut as well. Yeah. Even I have a power cut here. Oh, looks yeah. like raining very heavily. Yeah, it must Bangalore. be all over Bangalore thing then. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> before we want to continue. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, so this is great. Um, So, one of the things that always happens, and I think Shruti, as she was explaining, was able to point out that piece that the team leader might be in any position. As a coach, we need to hold our space. We need to be in our coaching presence and that really helps to establish safety okay who else who's not had a power cut and is still here with us? yeah i can go group five uh coach masterful coach jagdish and the team leader was rajesh Shari. few things that i will call out which has not been called out is the language that jagdish used as three said uh, I need your collaboration with your equals. What is it that you anticipate? So that language that Jagdish used was very uh, equal. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's the feeling I had that gave Jadishri a lot of comfort to open up. So in, in, a, in the first few minutes itself, she was willing to share her concerns. And I think that's because how Jagdish approached in terms of uh, that equal equal thing. Uh, very articulate in terms of bottom lines so of this is these are your concerns this is what you want to achieve through team coaching that also was done very well and they moved on to addressing the concerns uh in the concerns i uh, we were debating about this you know mm -hmm. uh when he gave the power to rajishwari to decide if it's too uncomfortable too difficult we will talk about it on a case by case situation and when i questioned jagdish later after the session he said you know i had this conflict and i'll handle it later so he did say that you know uh, if it if the, if there is a concern that comes up we will talk about it one on one and if you feel we don't need to it, it's okay and that really actually acknowledged that I, that is the statement that gave me the confidence that okay let's go and proceed with it yeah. I think that was a very uh, a thing that I am taking back for sure yeah and and I think Ajit you had asked this question somewhere I answered that in chat. And this is exactly how it is. In team coaching, you are contracting and recontracting because there will always be those new moments and new situations that come up. And you need to contract about, okay, now this is what's happening now. How do we work on this? Because you cannot have like a complete uh, relationship contract right up in the beginning. So I think this is how it works. So thanks. Thanks, Shanti. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
okay i'll go next there were some so, questions uh, in chat that i answered while you guys were in the breakout room i'm not sure if you're able to see those after you've come back uh, either ways i will like modify and filter and format this chat and email stuff to you from this yeah okay who else yeah, yeah. so uh, latika here um, so i'll talk for the breakout room 3 so nikhil was the coach and uh, ajit uh, was the team lead here um it started off with um, uh, with the coach first uh, very beautifully checking whether uh, the tier understands team coaching you know so so like what you had mentioned about you know that mistake about assuming that they know about it so so it went it started off with that and the uh, the team lead had gone through coaching so but then still what is team coaching was a little bit you know touched upon mm -hmm. uh, because it is from the you know one on one coaching uh we, then from there they moved on uh, to talk about ajit's um, apprehensions and he spoke about some concerns that he has about his new team and things like that so there there was this trust that was getting built you know over a period of time and uh, uh, and another thing what the coach uh, that uh, did was that you know uh, spoke about that we can start with getting your comfort about the team's competencies hmm. so so he so he was mentioning the team lead was talking about that i'm worried about the team's com uh, competencies you know i really don't know how to trust you know could be on my side and, and things like that so all those that uh, got covered and then it it moved on later you know uh, they both of them agreed about how they will how they will really take this forward mm. the team lead, suddenly there was a spot of energy with the team lead was like you know oh looks like you know you already have a structure in you know uh, in place and things like that in mind how we can do this together and on this and that so what we observed was that from the beginning um the apprehension level and the and uh, the team leads level of you know wanting to be in the team coaching it was actually on the on the lower side it started with around 7 uh, as we ended it had, had actually touched 9 so Good. within this period of time the way it moved was really kind of done very kind of the very very uh, supportive environment it was uh, what was the learning was um, one thing that that uh, was observed was that nowhere the discussion about uh, the purpose of the team was you know i mean we didn't touch upon the we as in the, uh, the coach and the team we didn't touch upon the purpose of the team or how would you define success for the team so that's something that we thought that the coach could and, have and done and that's okay because i mean your real life conversation would probably be an hour and here we had 15 minutes so that's <laughs> okay you know right, right. so much you could do so i think that's that's fine so right. um, thanks thanks uh, latika so i know we are at the top of the hour so i'm going to quickly you know bring this to a close uh, your ccos will be emailed to you uh, on the address that you've registered i will send you the extract from this chat of whatever is useful the recording for this will go up on the icf bengaluru charter chapters youtube channel um, so all of this should happen either by the end of this week or early next week but i will intimate you all with through email uh, but i hope you enjoyed the learning i hope you got something useful out of the conversation today right i've definitely enjoyed just reading the chat and you know hearing what you all have to say so it's been a great great experience for me for sure so thank you everybody for joining and i'm just going to put in my email address and phone number so connect with me on email connect with me on uh, whatsapp phone uh, and of course you know i will be creating a mailing group and you know we will refine this communication a little bit more going forward yeah but thank you everybody for joining and have a wonderful evening wonderful day depending on where you are and i will see you around for the future session hey rachel just one second thanks only i want to thank nagesh he was a team leader and you could see the coach in him because he made sril and the divraj as the team members who are part of the project and he also included him them in the conversation that i really want to acknowledge nagesh for that thank you thank you so much to acknowledge everybody who stepped everybody. out of their comfort zone yeah and push themselves to you know work in this zone of unknown you know that's not always easy so i think give Absolutely. yourself a round of applause for doing all of that yeah everyone yeah, everyone thank you kudos thank you right. thank, thank you, you. Bye thank bye. you thank you bye bye thanks everyone bye bye thank you thank you rachel pleasure